Welcome to another Draw7 TV video. Matt with you here and hope you're doing well, family. Thanks for joining us here on the uh, next Draw7 TV video. I am without proxy log on this one, so it's, it's going to be a little strange by myself, but uh, we're going to pull through and bring you another tabletop match here on the Draw7 YouTube page. Today we've got Alola Ninetales against Evital Garb. And uh, we'll see how this goes. So a new deck that could possibly see the metagame on the left-hand side and a, uh, a deck on the right-hand side that's already seen some play and uh, has seen some success in uh, recent memory. But uh, let's see how this Alola Ninetales does. And excited for the new Guardians Rising set. Of course, just uh, coming out a few weeks ago. And uh, I've loved every minute of it so far. Definitely one of my favorite uh, favorite sets in recent memory. All right, let's get the match started. So we have uh, two Evitals down on the board now. A choice band goes on the Evital in the active position. Now remember, a choice band does uh, 30 damage to your opponent's GX or EX Pokemon. So it's a uh, it's a uh, damage buff there. So it looks like Caden there grabs the choice band and moves it to the uh, to the one on the bench. Maybe. A request there from Brandon to do so. Maybe that's what he meant to do instead of putting it on the active. Um, or Kane was just saying, hey, you know what? Maybe you should put it here. <laughs> Max looks in there, gets an energy down on the Evita on the bench. A shaman now for three or four cards. Uh, trainer's mail now. I did forget to mention that uh, Caden is playing on the left-hand side. Brandon, who uh, uh, we've also seen on videos before, just like Caden, uh, is, uh, is uh, playing here. So glad to have those guys back. By the way, my voice isn't uh, up to snuff. I've been uh, dealing with a cold lately, so I'm uh, fumbling over words, and I sound a little bit different, so I do apologize for that. All right, so he grabs another uh, Max Elixir there from the Trainer's Mail. He has a third Trainer's Mail now, or a second Trainer's Mail, excuse me, and uh, grabs the Reverse Valley to give himself a 10-point boost with the Stadium card. Curious to see what Caden plays stadium-wise in this Ninetales deck. Uh, like I mentioned before in our other gameplay tabletop videos, I don't look at the deck list beforehand. I prefer not to do that so I can be surprised, just like you, to see uh, what's going to be in the deck. Another Max Elixir, but this time he fails this one, which seems to be a uh, not-so-rare occurrence. I've noticed a lot of the Max Elixirs uh, tend to fail off and on, so very annoying there. Uh, but would uh, still get a could get an ECE down on that even on the bench and get him fully uh, fully loaded. All right, so we'll see what Brandon does here on his uh, on his turn if he decides to do anything else or if he just uh, go, goes ahead and passes here. The Alolan Volpix has that free attack, the beacon attack. So Brandon tried to decide here what he's going to play. Decides to go with the escape rope here, so brings the... Okay, brings the Evital active. We'll play a Sycamore now, getting rid of uh, what appeared to be an Umbreon there, possibly. You know, I could be completely wrong on this deck. This could be the Umbreon Evital deck and uh, no garb to be found. I'm not exactly sure. I don't know the deck list. So uh, I guess uh, you'll find out <laughs> alongside with me. Here's another trainer's mail now. Let's see what he gets. I think I see a T Flare Grunt maybe. Yes, and he'll grab that. So some disruption in this deck as well. That would lead me to think that it's going to be the Evital Umbreon deck. And he could have told me that beforehand. I just don't remember. So... <laughs> All right, so he gets another Evital down on the bench. Here's an Ultra Ball now. Brandon taking, let's see, we're at, uh, wow, like a 10-minute turn here, it seems like. So a pretty long turn here for Brandon, which is completely fine, getting set up as best as he can. Sets an EV down. Looking to get that Umbreon set up. Now, I don't believe he's attached energy for turn yet, so he could technically do that here and get that that Umbreon out, uh, or he could attach to the Evital on the active. He does. He has that DCE in hand, so that Y Cyclone will be ready to go on next turn. All right, pass his turn. Now, Caden here, let's see what he decides to do. Gets the uh, Dive Ball set up, assuming he'll grab a, another Lolan Vulpix, and he does. So he'll set that on his bench. This Ninetales deck, really interesting, pretty cool. 
Uh, I know it's uh, being hyped up a little bit, so interested to see what uh, folks do with it as we move forward in the meta game. As as soon as uh, all this becomes legal in uh, tournaments, I'm looking forward to the Madison, Wisconsin tournaments. Uh, we're planning on going to that regionals, and we're also planning on going to the internationals in Indianapolis coming up in a couple of months as well so looking forward to some more competitive play i've only actually attended only one regional so far in my uh, playing career and that was in st louis as you can see some of the play mats here with uh, Sigalio on it uh, great time we had uh, definitely looking forward to get into uh, more of those all right so he will play the escape rope i'm assuming Caden just wanting to do that to do some some disruption here and he will bring up the eevee Looks like Caden goes with a DCE down there on the bench. Here's the Tapu Lele card. What a gorgeous card this is, and a card that can be splashed in pretty much any deck and uh, be used effectively. So we'll grab that, and uh, if you don't know what the card does, it allows you to search out a supporter card in your deck. It looks like Caden will go for that Lily for hopefully a turn one Lily here to draw up to eight cards. So yeah, going back to the regionals, looking forward to Madison, Wisconsin. Going to be a entirely new experience for me. Uh, St. Louis, we've been the last few years. This past year, I finally played. Still trying to decide on what deck to play. You know, I would like to uh, like to try to build something new, maybe Sylveon or something like that. But the same rage is so comfortable with the Mega Mewtwo deck, especially now adding Trash Lanch in there and uh, Tapu Lele. It just works so well in the Mega Mewtwo deck. All right, he will Lily here for one, two, three four five cards yeah there's another dive ball not sure what else Caden runs in this deck possibly a Glaceon something like that we'll grab another Alolan Vulpix off of that dive ball though uh, go ahead and search in his deck real quick to see what he's prized what he has it you know I've been thinking about uh, town map as well uh, I've been really curious about town map and trying to decide if that's uh, a good card to run or not i know a lot of people either love it or people hate it there's really no uh you know there's really no <laughs> one way to go there all right so pass his turn now as caden uses the beacon move off a of little volpix allowing him to grab pokemon out of his deck All right, Brandon now uh, playing that in. That's going to affect. It's going to affect uh, Caden grabbing those Pokemon. So almost beacon for nothing there. But of course, you don't know your realize your opponent's going to play the in, uh, hoping that he or she doesn't. So uh, they'll both grab six cards here and uh, get a refreshed hand. We can't see that Caden's got a field blower over there. Another trainer's mail from Brandon now. Did get that Max Elixir, it looks like. Uh, possibly a VS Seeker as well. Uh, yeah, I'm not surprised him going with that Max Elixir. They're wanting to uh, get another Evital going. So right now, look at the board state. We got three Evitals down on Brandon's side. Uh, we got that Tapu Lele hiding out over there in the corner. We got the Shaman down. Uh, two little Vulpix on the bench for Caden, one of the active, and that Tapu Lele on the bench as well. And again, Tapu Lele, one of those cards you can pretty much sprinkle in any deck with that attack uh, for the double colorless is uh, pretty darn strong. But really, the the exciting part of the card is the ability, so um, that can be useful as well. Choice Band goes down on an EV, and I was going to say, I bet the energy is coming next, which will be able to EV uh, that energy evolution there, getting into Umbreon. Of course, if I was Brandon looking through his deck and realizing Umbreon is prized, that would be absolutely terrible. And I'm assuming Umbreon isn't prized here, but Brandon is taking his time. <laughs> All right, so it looks like Umbreon is prized. Wow, that's really bad news for Brandon here. Yeah, he sets his deck down pretty uh Pretty forcefully there. <laughs> I don't think he's too happy about that. Will Max Elixir here does get that. Uh, decides to attach it to the Evotol next to the one on the bench that's already powered up. Thought about attaching it to that Tapu Lele, which wouldn't necessarily be a bad play as well. But you may not want to waste an energy, a dark energy wise, on the Tapu Lele since it only takes that uh, double colorless. 
Yeah, that really stinks the embryo on his prize. So that Eevee there with the choice band. And uh, he's just going to uh, use the attack and uh, pull a card off his deck. That's pretty funny. Uh, but now that energy and the choice band are wasted on that Eevee. Unless, of course, uh, he uh, gets it off a knockout. So Caden uses the Field Blower, which is a fantastic card. We definitely needed some removal there. Uh, removes the Choice Band. I believe he wanted that Stadium removed as well. Um, I'm sure he'll pick up on that here in a second. Oh, no, there's an Umbreon in the discard. So what I'm thinking is he placed two Umbreons. He, he discarded one earlier, and then he's now... Uh, prized one as well. So that's that's my guess, at least. All right, so Caden plays the Ultra Ball there. I'm assuming we'll be looking for an Alolan Ninetales to put in that active spot, and he does. So we'll see what Caden uh, decides to use there. It does have that DCE on him, so I'm assuming we'll use that first attack, allowing him to put 50 damage on any Pokemon on the opponent's side. All right, so let's see what uh, Caden does have an Aqua Patch in hand and the amazing Rescue Stretcher, allowing you to uh, pull a card from your discard pile onto your uh, onto your bench. Does get the Shaman down and Ultra Balls yet again. I would assume again for another Alolan Nine Tails. Again, we thank you guys for watching the Draw 7 videos. Proxy logged on around for this one, so it's a little weird broadcasting it myself. But uh, either way, glad to be here and have you alongside with us. We're trying to put out more content more frequently. We've been having some uh, time issues to do that. Been pretty busy with school and all that stuff, but now summer is here, so things are slowing down. So excited to get more content out here on the YouTube page for you guys. Let us know in the comments below if you like the content so far. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel or anything. We're basically just trying to uh, do a lot of the tabletop stuff. I know that's something that I prefer to watch on YouTube when I'm looking for Pokemon videos. So that's uh, mainly the content I want to bring. We also be uh, we'll also be doing some more streaming as well. All right, so a Lysander there from Caden will bring up that Evitol that uh, has no energy or anything on it, so that will uh, buy him some time. Uses the attack and puts 50 damage on the Evitol on the bench, and there's the Enhanced Hammer from Brandon to get that uh, DCE off of the Ninetales in the active spot. I believe Caden wanted to remove that Reverse Valley earlier with that Fuel Blower. I could be wrong. May have to re-roll the tape there and uh, see. So hopefully Caden will pick up on that. Maybe not. Maybe maybe I, uh, maybe I'm not seeing things right. Brady grabs seven cards there with the Sycamore. So Brandon here really needs to start attacking. Um, we're a few turns in now, not being able to see any any kind of attacking move from him yet gets that Fighting Fury Belt down on that uh, even on the active spot, allowing him to have a uh, little bit more HP there with that snipe attack from the Ninetales. Going to Ultra Ball here. So I'm, I'm guessing since his bench is full, he was just doing that to see what's in the deck, uh, what options he has moving forward. It really stinks that he wasn't able to get that uh, Umbreon set up. He may play a Rescue Stretcher, though, so if that's the case, he'll be able to bring that Umbreon out of the discard and uh, attach it to that Eevee down there. Uh, not sure if he plays the card or not. So Brandon here looking to possibly hard retreat. He does, brings up the Evitol there that's fully powered up. Okay, so he will, let's see, so he Y Cyclones and moves that uh, DCE down to the Evitol on the bench, doing 110 damage to the Ninetales. All right, Caden has another DCE at hand. Looks like he's going to place it on the active Ninetales. Does so, uh, uses the Aqua Patch. Be curious to see where he ends up and lands this one. Okay, so he lands it there. 
possibly setting that up for a GX attack later in the game, or even that second attack. Again, I apologize for my voice, guys. Uh, dealing with a cold, so uh, definitely not... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Struggling with that. Plays the VS Seeker for a Lysander. Looks like he did get another VS Seeker at hand escape rope. Uh, water energy there as well. Curious to see what he decides to do here. I would assume he's, yeah, choice span there. I would assume that he's just going to use the uh, first attack again for that snipe 50 damage. But where do you put the 50? That's the question. I guess you could put it on the active. Uh, you could also put it on somebody on the bench. Uh, you could knock that Eevee out in a couple of turns. Of course, that's not really the threat right now, so you don't want to do that. You could knock out that Shaman, possibly, but that's really only uh, Lysander bait as well, so don't necessarily want to do that. Um, I would assume you'll put it on the active here. Oh, so decides to go with the escape rope. Decides not to attack. We'll bring the Alolan Vulpix up. And we'll use Beacon. So it looks like what he's trying to do here is he's trying to get that nine tails on the bench set up. And, uh, yeah, pretty good play there unless Brandon can end here. Which I think Caden's willing to take a chance there. He needs to get that other uh, nine tails built up there on his bench, which is ready to go pretty much except for got to have that uh, Pokemon out. So DCE goes down on the Evitol. And we'll take the knockout there with Y Cyclone, and here comes the Ninetales. It's Brandon now now to five prize cards, six prize cards over there on Caden's side. The Ninetales on the bench goes down now. That one uh, powered up. Tapu Lily sits there still. Surprised either uh, guy has uh, decided to... Um, okay, let's see what happens there. Looks like he Lysandered up the Shaman, possibly, and then the uh, used the GX attack, which moves the damage counters from the Pokemon uh, to that Pokemon. So takes the knockout there, gets two prizes for that. Um, puts a Fighting Fairy Belt down there on the Evitol. We've got more matches coming up for you guys. You can see my awful match against my buddy Mark, who was playing the uh, Alakazam deck. I was playing my uh, Incineroar deck, which just isn't working right now. Can't get the consistency, but we'll be putting that match up here uh, so you can see me just get uh, obliterated. So Brandon mentioning there the Reverse Valley. But I'm not sure. I still think Caden wanted to, to remove that earlier. I could be completely wrong because I think Caden would have said something here. Um, does do the Y Cyclone for 110 damage and puts that on the Tapu Lele on the bench. Uh, so possibly going to be using him for an attacker um, later on in the game. Maybe this next turn even. Trainer's spell down. Let's see what Caden goes for. It looks like two water energies, choice band, and a third water energy. So I think that, yeah, the obvious choice there is obviously the choice band. Uh, I mean, he could have chose to whiff on it, but, uh, yeah, the choice band doesn't hurt to get down on there. I've not seen Brandon play a field blower yet. I'm not sure if, uh, if he has a field blower in the deck. I'm assuming so. This interesting matchup, though, uh, Night Tales is an interesting deck in general because, at least in my mind, which attack do you use? You know, do you use that sniping attack first? Do you go for the second attack? Uh, the GX attack, you want to time that out right to, to hopefully get a knockout with it or at least use it as effectively as possible. There's only a lot of choices there. Uh, they got the Tapu Lele, who's got that great attack as well. So it's, it's interesting. Uh, definitely is interesting. So we'll see uh, what he chooses to do. Set that uh, DCE down, but it looks like he's going to decide. Uh, yeah, go ahead and tap it to the attach it to the Tapu Lele, which is a good play. 
Uh, so right now that's doing uh, 40 damage plus whatever's on the opponent's active Pokemon. So he'd be doing 60 damage with that right now. Uh, the with 170 HP, plenty of HP there. So it looks like he does a snipe attack, 50 on the Evitol in the active spot. Uh, the choice band adds that 30 extra damage to it, so making it uh, 80 damage now on the Evitol. Uh, Olympia down, will heal that Evitol for 30, making it only have 50 now. Brandon promotes the Evitol with already damage on it, so I'm assuming he has a DCE. He does. He does a chat here. So I'm expecting to see a Y Cyclone again. And there's the Y Cyclone. And for the knockout, with that 10 extra damage there with the Reverse Valley. And Caden will promote this next Nine Tails. All right, so now down to five price cards. Uh, actually, Brandon should have taken price cards there. Not sure if he just forgot or <laughs> he may be so focused on the game he's not uh, paying that close attention. Hopefully he'll uh, catch that here in a moment. All right, we'll take the knockout here on the Evitol, and, and there we go. Okay, Brandon's like, hey, wait a minute. I was supposed to draw cards. Uh, <laughs> so grabs his cards. Caden will grab cards as well. So now down to two prizes on the Caden's side, three prizes for Brandon. The question here is, who does he promote? I would assume the Tapu Lele, probably the uh, safe choice at this point. Uh, could bring up that Evitol. not sure how many DCEs he's ran through now. Um, yeah, I believe that could be all the DCEs because there's two on Tapu Lele. Uh, yeah, so that's what he'll do. And he'll draw. So right now the Tapu Lele doing 20, 40, 50, 70, 80, 90, 100, 20, 40, 140 it looks like. If only he had a choice band on there. <laughs> Caden is preemptively putting the damage on there, assuming that's what he's going to do. Uh, does get that VS Seeker. We'll play the in and... Uh, yeah, that'll put Caden down to two cards in hand. Three cards for Brandon. Could be a good play there. There uh, doesn't want Caden to uh, get out any cards, especially an inner, a water energy or for that nine tails. You don't realize when you have a cold and you're announcing a match just how taxing it is. I'm already starting to lose my voice, so I do apologize, guys. Uh, but again, thanks for watching and uh, toughing it out with me. All right, three cards there for Brandon. Let's see what he gets. If only we had hand cams, which that's something I'm working on. Uh, looks like he may have had a max elixir. Yeah, he did. Okay, so there it is. Uh, gets the energy off the top. We'll go ahead and set it on the Evitol. And by rule, you're supposed to go ahead and shuffle the deck there. Will attack with the Tapu Lele for uh, 140. Gets that second water energy down on the Vulpix. Gets that choice band down on the Tapu Lele. High five for the perfect Sycamore. Seven cards. Not sure if Caden has any more Aqua Patches to play. Trainer's Mail here. Uh, Center Lady Sycamore. Another trainer. Trainer's Mail. We'll go ahead and grab the Center Lady. Still one of my favorite cards in the game. I think it's definitely underutilized right now. I uh, still love that card. I think it's very, very good. I think uh, just healing in general is very good. So something to keep your eye on moving forward in the game. All right, so he's going to hard retrieve this nine tails, get rid of that DCE, bring up his own Tapu Lele. And so that one, that one hit him for 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 20, 140, 50, 60, 70, 170. So that's knockout right there. That could be game. I think Brandon just realized that. I could be right, or I could be wrong, I should. 20, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100, 20, 40, 50, 60, 70. Yeah, that's going to be game there. Um, two Aqua Patches on Nine Tails, 170, and there we go. All right, Rough Seas, another Nine Tails in the discard. There's his Umbreon. That's killer. Enhanced Hammer and an Energy in Brandon's discard. So a great game, pretty much uh, back and forth there, but Alola Ninetales takes the win. It appears to me like Alola Ninetales is a much slower deck. Um, Evitol moves quite slow as well at times, 
Uh, but either way, a fun matchup and a big shout out to these guys for allowing me to record them. And yeah, so thanks guys for watching and I appreciate you dealing with my terrible voice on this video, my cold, and we'll see you next time here on uh, Draw7TV.